Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Georgi Chakarov and together we go through creating indicators in DHIS2. Okay, great. So I'm back here with Georgi. Hi, Georgi. Hi, Nick. Hello again. Hi. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. Um, so today we're going to be going over the how to create an indicator and program indicator in DHIS2 uh, assignments. So uh, we're here at this. The um, Georgie has a blank dashboard screen with no dashboards, but we'll go directly into the how to create an indicator page. So let's jump to that. So as you can see, Georgie's looking up the data elements and indicators app. And when we go there, then we'll go into the indicator. And how we have all of these, which are part of the training land indicators, but we're going to actually create our own so that we see um, what it looks like to create one. OK, so this is the data, uh, the, sorry, create new indicator screen. So the little stars show what we need to do with the name, the short name, and the indicator type. And the indicator type, I believe, let's see what those options are. Numerator only per 10,000, 100,000 per 1,000, or percentage or rate. Cool. So the, the numerator only is if we want to, for example, say like a, uh, um, just the numerator over 1. Uh, where the denominator is one, it's kind of implied that the, the numerator is is just over. Uh, it's just the numerator only. Um, and if we want the denominator, then we can actually have it uh, over another complex um, mathematical formula. But for the sake of this example, let's just do numerator only. So it'll just be one. Um, mathematical formula. And Georgie, you know a lot more about the formulas and stuff. Do you want to kind of talk about when you would use the the percentage or when you would use um, the denominator as well? Yeah, well, this is basically pre uh, pretty straightforward. So if you choose numerator only, as Nick said, you don't have actually, you see that when I chose this option, uh, well, you can automatically cannot select the edit denominator uh, menu here mm -hmm. so it's inactive and then per 10,000 or 100,000 per thousand this is basically a, a constant figure that your indicator will be divided by for example you would like to know a piece of information per 10,000 people or per thousand or you actually want to know a percentage so uh, your indicator will automatically get divided by uh, these uh, numbers to create a percentage or a promio or or the actually lower numbers. Cool. And rate factor, I think that this is actually something that could be um, adjusted, but not quite sure. So. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to ask someone else uh, for that because we don't know at the moment. Um, yeah. But we're going to look at numerator only, and and really this is because. Creating the indicator, uh, and then just click on that edit numerator. Creating the indicator is uh, really collecting uh, a set of information from one or more data elements so that you have a complex uh, formula that you can then report on individually as one uh, item. So let's filter out uh, some of this stuff so that we can look at it a little bit more easily. Let's just type in monthly because we have a bunch of data elements that have monthly in the name. And here we go. So uh, we'll just look at that top here. We have um, after school literary activities total. We have oh, facilitators, uh, facilities rehabilitated or constructed total. And then we see um, one is classroom, kitchen, commodity storage, latrine, water point. So those are all categories that we disaggregate by that we've actually looked when on an earlier session, uh, we talked about that. So what we could do for example, Georgie, if I were to want to create an indicator that was um, latrine and water point and kitchen. There we go. So we just double click and then press plus and then and that's it. And then on the bottom here, it says m monthly plus monthly uh, plus. Uh, great. So that's the idea that 
these are all water-based, so they had probably to do with some uh, someone coming in who was, uh, I'm just making this up, but uh, I'm assuming that we probably had to hire a plumber or someone who knew what they were doing with water. So if we add all these together, we know by the kitchen, uh, the latrine, and the water point that there was, we had to deal with water. Uh, so we can add all those together and say, you know, this indicator uh, has to do with how many facilities that had to do with water were, cre were created or rehabilitated during this period. Uh, and we can ignore the classroom and the commodity storage for now, but we end up with one number that's a collection of those three things, and that's why the categories are so useful. Uh, we could also do the total minus um, the classroom and commodity storage, and that would give us the same um, result if we did no, well, no, no, but now, now what you're doing, Georgie, is you're actually doing all of them minus. So if you just, yeah, select it all, uh, I think kind of control A should be able to do it or just like that. If you double clicked uh, the total mm -hmm, and then press minus the kitchen and community or the classroom and commodity storage, exactly. That'll get us to the same oh. result. Yeah, that's it. So that should get us to the same result in this example of just isolating. Uh, but you can do it with addition or, or subtraction. Um, Georgie, do you want to kind of add any other point in terms of um, uh, do you have anything else to add? You know, I could um, actually share just a, a few other um, specifics. For example, if you're um, working on a formula and it's getting complex and complex because you actually might be adding a few data elements and then you wanna, let's say, subtract a few or um, divide by some of them, then here is like an automatic check here that actually shows you whether the mathematical expression is well formed or not well, well formed. So it doesn't actually give you which part of the expression is missing, but in this case, I skipped the, the argument, say I didn't press plus or minus. So in that sense, it will not leave you, it will not allow you to create this expression. So you need to go back and revise. So this is one of the handy features. So now see when I added back the plus, then it actually shows you the description. So here in the formula, it actually gives you the UIDs, the unique IDs of the data elements or the segregations that you're using here. But then in the description field, it actually shows the actual uh, data elements that you have used for building the indicator. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, here you can actually add a description of your indicator, right? Just saying, uh, yeah, this is a description of the numerator formula. Uh, yes, the the new era. Sorry, so you can actually say this is the uh, let's say total uh, rehabilitated constructed facilities minus let's say commodity and classrooms uh, or other. Then you have constants. This is something that's really handy if you know that you have numerators that are multiplied by a uh, constant number that will change in time. For example, you might want to add or, or let's say divide or multiply by 10 just because just a, you know example that doesn't make any mathematical relevance in this case but let's say you know that the total number of facilities is let's say 10 so you can divide by 10 but at some point if you know that the total number of facilities changes it's, it's increased by going and changing the constant itself actually you don't have to change the, the uh, numerators of the indicators individually so the constant will do that for you automatically oh, so yeah. yeah so this is one one thing that's uh, good to know good point yeah great um, so I think that's probably good enough to just show people how to create an indicator uh, and of course it really comes down to your own formula and what you need for your uh, for your instance and for your indicator uh, when you're doing it so you have to know that it's a clean formula um, before you get into this, but once you do, it's actually not that complicated. Yes, and there's just one other feature that you can actually select before um, constructing the numerator. It's, uh, let me cancel this. Mm -hmm. If you choose the annualized feature, like yes or no, what annualized will give you is, for example, if you collect monthly data or data on 
actually monthly data and you know that the end of the year this monthly data actually compiles a yearly data and um, you would like to know at a specific month your indicator or your data element let's say as a portion percentage of let's say total population and then you collect data only for monthly um, extract of a population or, or data for uh, for the month by selecting the annualized uh, option what it automatically will do is it will extrapolate it will multiply by 12 your data so that it gives you a yearly representation and then you can divide by let's say another yearly constant like a total number of population or total number of schools and the like so that it will give you a, a representation for the year so just to, to further that to make sure that I understand you're saying that if, if I choose annualized then I can work with uh, data that I collect monthly weekly yearly uh, biannually and they'll all uh, it, the the system will automatically make them all yearly yes and then I can choose to then uh, divide them by week or by month if I want to, but they'll all be able to work together because the system will take the monthly and divide it by 12, take the weekly and divide it by 52, and et cetera, et cetera. Yes, exactly. Great. Exactly. Cool. Well, I think that's good for now. Thanks so much, Georgie. And um, we'll, we'll have a little catch up uh, in a second about um, what program indicators look like um, in the tracker side. But thanks for now. Okay, thank you. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical 